I'm doing some bonus podcasts about school and not going because it's this time of year and we can feel the push. So if you're new, this will be perfect timing. If you're not so new, stay and listen. It's funny how when you first start, you're so frantically trying to get your bearings that you miss at least half of what people are trying to tell you. So let's consider this podcast back to basics. And before we get into the basics of the unschooling option, I want to address the overarching basic thought that needs to be debunked. The kids don't really have to go to school. No one wants to admit that, but it's the truth. If you're listening and you haven't made the leap yet, or if you opted for homeschooling last year and it didn't really work out for you, reach out. I have so many resources to help make your unschooling journey easier. So yes, you survived last year somehow, but you want better than that. You know in your heart of hearts that life can be better than what it's been up to this point. The wrangling with your kids about doing schoolwork, trying to spin the idea that yes, this is all necessary despite their protests. It's hard to do because you have your own doubts. All those necessary classes and subjects from your own school days, long forgotten. Besides, no one ever asked you in your adult life about the Pythagorean theorem or the date of the Battle of Hastings. Heck, you don't even use your degree. Neither do I. Talk about a waste of time and money. You've been deputized by the kids' school as their homework police, making sure they memorize all those same irrelevant facts. Or you've taken on the homeschooling responsibility and you are the warden yourself. Not fun, not engaging, not even sure they're learning much. But what are you going to do? You used to remind yourself that this is simply what everyone must endure until they're 18 and graduate. But school these days, it doesn't look like your school days with so much emphasis on testing, the pressure and the stress. The bullying that happens has really gotten out of hand and teachers seem incredibly frustrated. I don't know whether the system got too big or too removed from the learner, but it has gone very wrong. And you're pretty sure your kids are not going to look back on those days with a lot of happy memories. So as you're wringing your hands and wondering if there are any viable options at all, you've started to notice a few more families deciding to homeschool. And maybe even the term unschooling has popped up. Before we dive into a few of the common questions that I want to address, I want to talk to those of you who think you can't homeschool or unschool because you had a rough time during the pandemic. Unschooling doesn't look like what you went through at all. Not only is the world more available to move about in, but you don't have to make your child fit the school's agenda. That was such a horrible time. Even the schools ended up ditching their own agendas. So unschooling doesn't look like that at all. Instead of cramming the kids into the curriculum, forcing them to complete stuff because, well, someone said you had to, you can flip the process upside down. Start with the learner. What are the interests? Then all the learning begins. You don't have to pour a ton of facts onto them and hope they memorize it all for the test. You don't need those facts in your real life now, and it's very possible the kids are noticing that. No wonder they ask what we asked when we were in school. Why do I need to know this? It's a good question. So if you're telling yourself we were miserable failures as the homeschoolers in the pandemic, rest assured this is a new ballgame. The first question that pops into people's minds is usually, Do regular people like me homeschool their kids? And as soon as that question slips in, the flood of additional questions surface. Is homeschooling even legal here? Are there a ton of hoops to jump through? Would I even be qualified to do this? How would they make any friends? How will they learn anything? What if we can't stand each other? So I just want to tell you, yes, regular people do homeschool their kids. You don't have to be doing this for religious reasons or because you're a crunchy granola type of parent. I was neither of those. We went to church, but it wasn't my reason to step away from school. We ate healthy food for the most part, and I was always looking for a kinder, more gentle way to parent. I didn't really understand why attachment parenting stopped when they became school age. I was just a regular mom from the suburbs. I had no plans to homeschool as we were trying to make school work for my little kindergartner. 
But as first grade rolled around, it became clear that the classroom experience was not a good situation. His enthusiasm for learning was already starting to wane. His curiosity was being squashed. His individualism and self-expression, well, there was no room for that. So I started to investigate the homeschooling option. It was the 90s, and the landscape looked a lot different. But the times have changed, and more and more moms like me and you started leaving the local schools, venturing into this learning no man's land. Interestingly, there were plenty of people choosing home education back then and thousands more now. It's a subculture that exists in every community. You may not see it until you actually start. So let's tackle the five starter questions. Over the years, I've created resources to help people get to the bottom of the fears that come with each of these questions. So if you want to dive deeper on any of these, I'll leave links for the resources. Number one, if you're worried about the legalities of unschooling, homeschooling is legal in all 50 states. Each state decides its own rules for what hoops homeschoolers must jump through to legally homeschool. A quick Google search can take you to your local and or state homeschooling group, and they will have an explanation as to how the community is dealing with the compulsory attendance laws. Some states require nothing of homeschooling families. Others want periodic testing. Some want an end-of-the-year evaluation. And unschooling is simply a legitimate style of homeschooling. All laws and requirements about homeschooling apply to unschooling. It's always best to talk to the local unschoolers, though. They can help you navigate the reality of how the laws apply. I do have a collection of local groups linked at the Unschooling mom to mom website and more about how to figure out what your laws are. Sometimes the legal question has to do with how to fulfill the requirements about various subjects. Unschoolers do this because they see that subjects are weaving throughout everyday life activities. When you realize it's about the learning, you begin to see that it doesn't have to come from a classroom or a textbook or one subject at a time. So the legal requirements are being met creatively, but met. Number two, people wonder, am I qualified? Well, of course you are. Do you know everything? Of course not. No one said you have to know everything. You simply have to be a good resource finder, a good tour guide, a good communicator. Being able to tap into the local community, the libraries, museums, friends with skills, the internet, is all you need to be able to provide a wonderful, rich learning environment. This is really more of a confidence problem though, right? And so the solution is about reframing what really matters. It's also because we've had decades of being told to rely on the experts and the implications, spoken or not, was that we could not be trusted without these experts and their plans. Almost a Stockholm syndrome. Okay, number three, what about socialization? That question always rolls around. People envision lonely children at a kitchen table, but that's not what this looks like anymore. Certainly not what unschooling ever looked like. This socialization question has a lot of layers to it, some of it even carrying over from our own childhoods, insecurities or fears or things we want our kids to avoid. Or maybe we have really social kids and we can't figure out how they'll make enough friends to be happy. But unschooled kids make friends through shared interests and experiences, the way any of us do who aren't sitting in a classroom. It's about desk proximity or shared first letter of the last name. That can't really be the basis of a friendship. I can remember being best friends with someone for a year while we sat beside each other in class. And then the next year, we had no shared classes, and that friendship was gone. (sighs) Unschooled kids aren't missing out on anything by skipping those kinds of friendships. All over the country, unschoolers are getting together at parks and homes and libraries and rec centers. They're off on field trips, getting together, meeting for game days, pool parties, and even midweek sleepovers. Number four, people ask, how will they learn? Well, I touched on this a little bit when we were talking about the legalities. But when we dive deeper, it's not just about checking the box for the legal requirements. It's about seeing that life provides so many opportunities to learn. The difference is that we start with their interests and curiosities, and then that ripples outward. That's why curriculum doesn't work. Many of these opportunities can't be planned ahead of time. It's about being open and flexible and living in the moment and learning about what's crossing your path. Instead, 
saying you can't be bothered because you have something else, something someone else has decided is more important, that that needs the focus first. Well, unschoolers don't subscribe to that kind of thinking. When you know that everyone is hardwired to learn, you can trust that learning will happen. I should point out this reversal in thinking to to go from the top-down, teacher-driven, make-them-do-it way to a more learner-driven, individualized approach to learning takes time. We call it de-schooling, and I have a lot of resources that can help you. Podcasts and video playlists all about de-schooling because it doesn't happen overnight. It's part of the heavy lifting parents will do to undo some of the faulty thinking you might be carrying around with you. But when you think about learning, recognize all the ways your kids expand their knowledge, their vocabulary, their skills. It's from the internet or books or movies or conversations with people in the know. Life experiences so many ways. Classrooms are only one method, not the only way to learn. And you'll probably learn a little along the way too. So learning really doesn't have to be dull drudgery to get through. It can be exciting and fun. That's what will make your kids, the learners, engage, not a stack of worksheets. I have a section at the website called How to Unschool Kids Learn Academics. I'll link to that below and an ebook that you can get that shows all the various activities that are happening and what subjects are actually being touched on. It's called Everything Counts. I'll link to that too. The fifth question is sometimes whispered because lots of people think it, but no one wants to say it out loud. What if it's too much togetherness? If this is really the case, then you have the opportunity to work on it. You'll be able to create rhythms in your day that work for you and your kids. You don't have to be side by side 24 hours a day. But when you remove the rushing around and the pressure that happens in those precious hours after they come home from school or before they hit the pillow, you'll be surprised how much everyone's attitude improves. I do have two really good book suggestions that might help you. Link to them below. One is by Myra Kirschenbaum. It's an older book and it's called The Parent Teen Breakthrough, A Relationship Approach. And the other is by Bonnie Harris called When Your Kids Push Your Buttons. So. There are my quickie answers to the first five questions that usually pop up for people. I'm sure there are more percolating in there and we'll have time to talk more. I would love to help you figure this out. You can hop on my calendar and we can talk one-to-one, join the membership group to get ongoing support or DIY your way through all the guides and courses and books that I have waiting for you over at the website. Go to unschoolingmomtomom.com slash unschooling dash support to see what's there. I have the Not Back to School webinar on August 24th in a week, so you'll want to be sure to register for that. I have some some PDFs for those that come, and you know, there's nothing worse than feeling you don't have any options, but at least in this case, that's not true. You do. So I'll be back again to help you on your unschooling journey. Enjoy the kids. Take a deep breath. You can do it. Unschooling works. Well, talk to you again soon.